God bless you so much and welcome to Rima International Bible Church here in the heart of Silver Spring, Maryland. Today's message is the faith of Joseph. Scripture says that by faith, Joseph spoke about the exit or the exodus of Israel from Egypt and then gave instructions about the burial of his bones. How does a living man speak and, and make arrangements about the burial of his bones while he's still in Egypt? That's a mystery that we're going to discover and the six things that Describe the faith of Joseph. Come with me into the service and receive this blessing from the mouth of God. Thank you so much for joining our service here today in Silver Spring, Maryland. I bring you a word from the mouth of God titled, The Faith of Joseph. And we've been going through the heroes of faith in Hebrews 11 uh, from the begin or since the beginning of this year. And I want to challenge you that you take these lessons and apply them to your life so that the messages are relevant and so that your own story about faith is being um, written. I want to kindly ask those in the house to rise so we read the text. Uh, we'll read two, two portions of scripture. The first is Hebrews 11 and 22. And then the next one will be Genesis 50 from verses 22 through 26. And... Um, Hebrews 11, 22 is about Joseph's faith. And let's read it with power. Let's go one, two, three. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. Then now we go to Genesis 50 from verse 22. Let's go at the count of three. One, two, three. Joseph stayed in Egypt along with all his father's family. He lived 110 years and saw the third generation of Ephraim's children. Also, the children of Machir, son of Manasseh, were placed at birth on Joseph's knees. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die, but God will surely come to your aid and take you up out of this land to the land he promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Joseph made the Israelites swear an oath and said, God will surely come to your aid, and then you must carry my bones up from this place. So Joseph died at the age of 110. And after they embalmed him, he was placed in a coffin in Egypt, may God add a blessing to the reading of his word, and may his word that I'm about to preach be transformational. May the word that you're about to hear transform your life. May the word that you're about to receive affect you in a positive way. May the word that God is about to bring to you Change the trajectory of your life. May the word that you're about to receive be mixed with faith in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the preaching of your word. I pray that you will take my words and anoint them and use it to bless the hearers today. It's in Jesus' mighty name I pray with thanksgiving and God's people said amen. amen. You may take your seats. The faith of Joseph, the faith of Joseph. I pray, as I said, that you are writing your own faith story. Hebrews eleven twenty two. by faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt. He spoke, he gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. <laughs> Very interesting text. The man is dying and he's thinking ahead. He's thinking through the generations. And he's, he's planning for the arrangement of his 
remains. He says, these are my remains when I die. Take them from Egypt. That's pretty, when people are dying, they usually have more urgent things. They, 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 they're trying to hold on to their life. He's in another realm. He's thinking about something else. About where his mortal remains will finally rest. That is a man who knows God. And he says, God will surely, can he say surely? He says, God will surely come to your aid. And today, as sure as God is, I, I speak to you in the name of Jesus, that God will surely come to your aid. Can you say amen? amen? In whatever area that you are trusting God, God will surely come to your aid. I have waited on God for certain things, and surely did he come through. It took a long time, but surely God came through. And it is with the same heart that I preach this message. Joseph tells them that God will surely come through. Not maybe. Not perhaps. Not even if everything lines up. God will surely come through. And he will take you up out of the land or out of this land, which is Egypt, to the land he promised on oath to me, no. To Joseph, no. The, the promise was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So three generations before him. His, the promise was given to Joseph's father, his grandfather, and then his great-grandfather. And he's talking about a promise given to those who came before him. And he said, because of that promise given to them, the word will come to pass. The word will come to pass. God will surely come to your aid and take you up out of this land to the promised land. Almost as if there is something wrong with this land. There is nothing wrong with this land. Joseph is a prime minister. He's number two. He oversaw the famine. He has a great name and a great reputation. If you remove Pharaoh, he's next. So it's not like there's something wrong with this land. Actually, far from that, the land that Joseph is living in together with his brothers is good land, and they are prospering, and they are doing well. Joseph still cannot wait to get out of this land. There's something there for us. What was wrong with Egypt? Nothing. In Egypt, they lived in Goshen. Goshen is a country within a country. Because of Joseph's good deeds, Pharaoh gave them a parcel of land that was their republic in Egypt. And they were well taken care of in Egypt. In Genesis 47, 27, Scripture says they acquired property. Say property. Isn't that what everybody dreams of? They acquired property in Egypt. They were fruitful in Egypt. They were not barren in Egypt. They were fruitful in Egypt, and they increased greatly in number. Genesis 47, 27. That is their record in Egypt. They are thriving in Egypt. Joseph says, I can't wait to get out of Egypt. What kind of man is that? It's a good job, but you can't wait to get out. You live in a great city. Everything is going well, but you can't, you can't wait to get out. What's going on here? So what is wrong with Egypt? Number one, nothing is wrong with Egypt. They are prospering. They are thriving. They are fruitful. That's our dream, isn't it? But he says, God will surely take us out of the land. What is wrong with Egypt? Number two, nothing is wrong with Egypt. Joseph is royalty. As I said, you take away Pharaoh, he's next. And he knows how to take of himself and his people. But Joseph says, God will surely take us out of this place. Why? What is wrong with Egypt? Number three, nothing is wrong with Egypt. Joseph and his people lived a life of privilege in Egypt. 
They were not like regular folk. When Joseph's father died and he had to go bury them, it, it was just amazing the kind of royal treatment that Egypt rolled out for Joseph and his family. Genesis 50 and verse 7 through 9. So Joseph went up to bury his father. All Pharaoh's officials accompanied him. Wow. All Pharaoh's officials accompanied him. The dignitaries of his court and all the dignitaries of Egypt. Does it get better than that? Chariots and horsemen also went up with him. It was a very large company. This is the royal treatment that Joseph and his folks are enjoying in the land, but Joseph cannot wait to get out of Egypt. There's something there for you. So what was wrong with Egypt? Number four, nothing was wrong with Egypt. <laughs> they lived a life of fruitfulness. Exodus 1, 6 to 7, when Joseph and all his brothers and all that generation died, the Israelites were exceedingly fruitful. They multiplied greatly, they increased in numbers and became so numerous that the land was filled with them. So what is wrong with Egypt? Nothing is wrong with Egypt. But Joseph said, I'm going to die and when I die, I don't even want my bones to be here. I don't want my bones to be here. When I die, a time is coming because of the promise of God. You must get me out of here as you are leaving. So what is on his mind? What is he thinking? How is he thinking? And by the way, by the time Joseph is dying, Israel has not yet been enslaved. They have not yet slipped into slavery yet. They are living the good life. Exodus 1 and 8 says that when he died, a new king, or after he died, a new king who did not know Joseph arose. That is when their enslavement began. So by the time he's talking about his death and his bones, life is good. Life is very good. Yet he has something on his mind, and I want to transition you to look at the characteristics of the faith of Joseph. Can you say the faith of Joseph? The, what does Joseph's faith look like? Joseph told his folks that God will surely take them out of this land to the land he promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How did he know about it? He had to take the, the, the book and study the prophecies and study the promises of God. God never told Joseph that I'm going to take you. God told his parents, his grandfather, and then his great-grandfather. But somewhere along the line, Joseph was diligent and followed what God had been saying to them as a people, as a nation. And he said, the promise is for my family. Therefore, it applies to me. So the first characteristic of the faith of Joseph is that it studies and knows God's words and promises. If you don't know God's word, if you don't know the promises of God, you are not even going to get anywhere close to it. The sad truth is that many people hang around the word of God and live like God never made promises to them. It is a disaster to hang around the word of God and not know what the word of God is worth. Joseph was studious. Joseph was diligent. He knew the promises of God. The faith of Joseph knows the promises of God. The faith of Joseph studies the word of God. The faith of Joseph is curious about what God said and what God promised. That is the first characteristic of the faith of Joseph. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions about his bones. The second characteristic of 
the faith of Joseph is that it does not forget what God promised. Say, I will not forget. It studies, it knows what God has said, but it commits it to memory and goes back to it at the appointed time. The faith of Joseph is not just walking out there. The faith of Joseph remembers that 25 years ago God spoke and that word has not come to pass. And when God speaks, you better listen. We will look. I was watching a short video of my ordination in 2016, and some of the things that were spoken over our lives by people who, who had no clue where we were, what we're doing, and I look back 2024, I said, oh my goodness, they should see the video. They should see the things they said. They should, the word of God will definitely come to pass. But the faith of Joseph will make sure it commits it to memory. The faith of Joseph is not casual about the promises of God. When the faith of Joseph hears the promise of God, it immediately commits it to memory and says, this word will come to pass. And at the appointed time, it goes back to it. Daniel is one man who acted like Joseph. Daniel, when he was a younger man, heard the prophet Jeremiah speak about Israel's captivity in Babylon for 70 years. He heard it, he knew about it, and God would have it that they would go to Babylon in captivity under Nebuchadnezzar. And then Daniel was watching his, 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 his time peace because he knew about 70 years, and he knew that after 70 years, God must do something. That's the faith of Joseph. And so in the first year of the reign of Darius, this is Daniel 9, the son of Xerxes, ruler of Babylon, scripture says, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet. He was not clueless. God had said something. The word meant something. And out of all the exiles, he knew that there was a word spoken long ago and it was time to go for that word. I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet that the desolation of Jerusalem would last 70 years. So he was calculating it. And when it was 70 years, scripture says, so I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition in fasting and in sackcloth and ashes. Do you know the promise of God? Do you know what God spoke concerning you? Have you gone through the scriptures and searched? And have you committed it to memory? Or have you taken the promise of God so casually? Which is the tradition in the church. God has given promises of victory in this earth, in every sphere. And we live underneath our privilege. What happened to the promise of God? Why are we not clinging on to the promises of God? So the first thing, the faith of Joseph studies and knows God's words and promises. And then it also commits it to memory. It never forgets what God said. Please don't forget what God has said concerning you from his word and personally through prophecy. And don't take it casually. I don't take the word of God casually. I can, I can wait for it for a hundred years because I know that it will come to pass. The third characteristic of the faith of Joseph is that it is based on personal experience and personal relationship. It's not abstract. Joseph is telling them that God will surely come to your aid and take you up out of this land to the land he promised on oath to father, grandfather, great-grandfather because he has a personal experience with God. And he has seen God bring his word to pass in his own life. When he was a younger man back at home, he had dreams. God spoke to him in dreams and he saw the sun and the moon and the stars bow down to him. 
His father told him, is your father and mother and your brothers, are they all going to worship you? The word of the Lord came to Joseph. And after the word of the Lord came to Joseph, he found himself in a pit, and then he found himself in slavery, and then he found himself in Potiphar's house, being lied upon, and then he found himself in jail. But the word of the Lord came to pass after 13 years. He went to Egypt at 17. He was elevated at 30. And he has seen the word of God come to pass. So personally, he knows that the word of God is real. When I stand and I tell you to trust God, it's because I have trusted God many times and I have seen the faithfulness of God. In the worst of conditions, God has come through. The faith of Joseph is not abstract. It's not in the air. It doesn't come because you go to church. It comes because you walk with the Lord. And you have a personal experience. And you can close your eyes and tell somebody, God will surely bring you through. God will surely deliver you. God will surely provide. God will surely come to your aid. Why? Because you have seen him do it. The faith of Joseph is based on personal experience. It's based on personal relationship. It's based on something that you have tested and, and, and tried. That's how you open your mouth and tell somebody, God will surely come to you. And today, if you are in need of aid from God, I speak in the name of Jesus. God will surely come to you. Why? Because he has come to my aid many times. Too many times to count. And by the way, Joseph says he will surely, say surely, surely, surely. not maybe, not 70% chance. Joseph is able to guarantee that the word of God will come to pass. The faith of Joseph is certain, is confident, that God will fulfill his word spoken to you, given to you in a dream, in a vision through scripture. God's word will surely come to pass. Some people trust God Monday through Friday and then the weekends they don't trust God. They trust God when they have, then when they don't have, they can trust God. They trust God when they are well, and then when they are not well, they can trust God. They, th they, they trust God when the family is going well, and then when the family is not going well, they cannot trust God. No, God will surely come to pass. Surely is the word. He changes not. In him, he lacks the capacity to fail. God will surely. That's the faith of Joseph. The faith of Joseph is resolute. The faith of Joseph stands alone. The faith of Joseph is not, is not perturbed by the wind. The faith of Joseph is sure that the word of God will come to pass. Today, God wants you to be sure that the promise will come to pass. Do not waver, friends, about the, 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 the promises of God. Scripture says not a single word out of the mouth of God will fall to the ground. The reason I can guarantee your future is bright is because the word of God says it's bright. Scripture says I know the plans I have for you. They are plans of good and not of evil to bring you to the expected end. The middle might be messy. It has nothing to do with the end. The end will be great because God said so. So the fourth thing the fourth characteristic, the faith of Joseph is certain. I am certain about the promises of God concerning this. I am certain. I wake hard and I sleep. I am certain. I don't count statistics. I, I am certain about the promises of God. I have walked with God too long and seen him be faithful on too many occasions to wonder to doubt, to second guess, to, to, to quiz God. Joseph said, God will surely bring that promise. Whatever you're trusting God for, I speak to you in the name of Jesus that the God I serve and the God you serve will surely bring it to pass. Can you say amen? amen. And then the fifth characteristic of the faith of Joseph, and this one I want you to pay attention to, 
it does not settle for second best. The faith of Joseph doesn't settle for second best. Maybe you are sick and you are, you are getting by on medication, that's fine. But God promised healing. God promised healing. So don't, don't settle for the second best because God can touch you. And as I preach, I pray that God will touch your body. There's nothing wrong with medication, but God said, I can heal you. I can heal you. Now the Israelites settled in Egypt in the region of Goshen. They acquired property there and were fruitful and increased greatly in number. Genesis 47, 27, we read that earlier. They acquired property. Isn't that a dream in America? Oh, I bought a house. God bless you for your house. And then I bought a second house, and, and then I bought a beach property. God bless you. They acquired property. There is, it's great to acquire property. And they were fruitful. We all want to be fruitful. The pastor and the ministry wants to be fruitful. You, you, you want to be fruitful in your business. You want to be fruitful in your schooling, right? You want your career to be fruitful. So there's nothing wrong with being fruitful. And they increase greatly in number. You want your clients to increase. You want your congregation to increase, Pastor. You want your, your money to increase. They increase in number. That's good. That's the dream. But that was not the promise. <laughs> that was not the promise. They knew that, Joseph knew that the promise of God is better than the comfort. Egypt. That's where we miss it. The promises of God have to do with purpose. Purpose that is usually bigger than us. Joseph and his folks are living the life in Egypt. They don't need to go anywhere. Life is great, but Joseph is spiritual. The faith of Joseph is spiritual. The faith of Joseph is fixated on purpose, not pleasure. And Joseph said, yeah, we are doing well over here, but what did God say? God said we'll be out of here. So let's put the pleasure aside and let's follow purpose. Let's follow the promise of God. God may have had us here for a certain time, but he also said that we'll be out of here. And many times when God wants to shift things around, we get comfortable in pleasure and comforts. And we lose sight of purpose, of the greater purpose. Anytime God wants to move you into discomfort, it's because he has a bigger plan. When God sent his son, Jesus Christ, it was an assignment of discomfort. But the world was standing, was going to benefit from that sacrifice. So today is God leading you out of your Egypt. Is God leading you out of your comfort zone so that the promise and the bigger purpose will be fulfilled? If so, embrace it. Don't cling on to the comforts of this life. And say, it's good in this city, it's good in this job, it's good in this area, it's good this way, let's keep it that way. God says, I want you to move. That's when you remember what God said. That's when you turn the dial because God wants you to keep going. The faith of Joseph does not settle, settle for second best. If they had stayed in Egypt, that would be second best. Good as it was, that was not God's best for them. Life was great, but God had some, God has something greater in your future. Amen. So when he beckons you, please follow. Please be willing to make those adjustments and say, I will go. I will go. God has not called us to a life of comfort. He's called us to a life of purpose. A life of purpose. And when you respond, the nations of the world will be blessed. And then the sixth characteristic of the faith of Joseph, it makes plans that align with God's promises. 
It makes plans. If God says, go northbound, please don't get on the 95 and be driving southbound. You miss God. Joseph made the Israelites swear on oath and said, God will surely come to your aid and then you must carry my bones up from this place. Joseph is not just talking. He's making arrangements that, 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 that align with what God has said. They are in Egypt. He, they don't know when they're going to go, but he said, whenever that happens, whenever that happens, take my bones out of That's a man who has embraced faith in God. That's a man who has received the word of God and embraced it wholeheartedly. He knows that they'll be out of Egypt. He knows with all his heart that I'm dying, but one day I'll be out of this. One day God will take you out of bondage. So don't live like you're going to be in bondage for the rest of your life. You've been praying about that freedom. You've been crying out to God. God heard your prayer, and one day, so begin to make plans that look like you actually believe what God said. Begin to make plans that are in accordance with the future. Don't say, let us live and let us eat and drink for tomorrow with that. God is coming to get you out to the promised land. So while you are in bondage, while you are in captivity, while you are in Egypt, don't live like Egypt is everything. A brighter day is coming. And if you don't make preparations for that day, you'll be caught unawares. Where day will come when Pharaoh will say, go. And at that time, it will be too late to begin to plan. So while you are in Egypt, begin to make plans for the promise. And because God will surely come and deliver you. So just a recap, the faith of Joseph's Studies and knows God's word and promises. It does not forget the word that was promised. It, it, the, the faith of Joseph will make us diligent with this book. We will know the text. We will read the text. We will study the text. We will be familiar with the stories. We will be familiar with the promises. If you don't know, God has promised that he'll make a way where there seems to be no way. When you go and there seems to be no way, you're going to come back. And somebody who read that scripture is going to say, it doesn't matter that there seems to be no way. What do the words say? The word says that God will make a way where there seems to be no way. So God must make a way and God will make a way. You know, the, third, it does, the second, it does not forget what God promised. The third, it's based on personal experience and a relationship with God. The fourth, it is certain and confident that God will fulfill his word. The fifth, it does not settle for second best, and that's an important. Don't settle for second best in the name of Jesus. Don't settle. He said, oh, we're going to get by with 60%. God never told you 60%. He said, oh, oh, 80 ain't bad. No, 80 is bad. God said 100%. So let, let, let's just manage. That's how we shortchange ourselves. And then we change the vision. And then we change what God intended to give to us. It does not settle for second base. And then the final one is he, it makes plans that align with God's promise. Let's go to the end of the story. Time will pass. And Joseph will die. And then a Pharaoh will come who, Scripture says, did not know Joseph. Uh, another translation says, to whom Joseph meant nothing. Who is Joseph? Jo who? That era had passed. And life is different. Everything is new, changing in regime, changing administration. So much time has passed, and life is happening to Israel in Egypt. And then three generations later, after Joseph's generation will come Kohath, who is the second son of Levi, so that's generation one. After Kohath will come Amram, next generation. Amram married Joshebet. 
And then after Amram, third generation Moses. So three generations after Joseph. Joseph, Kohath, Amram, then Moses. You know what the time span was? Approximately 337 years after Joseph's death. Israel stayed in Egypt for a total of 430 years. Let's do some math here. Joseph lived in Egypt for 93 years. When he went to Egypt, he was 17. He died at 110. So he lived in Egypt for 93 years. That time passed, and they will spend a total of 337 years after Joseph's death. And they were waiting for the word of God. Say the word of God. The word of God will come to pass. 337 years after the death of Joseph, then Pharaoh comes up and says, let my people go. Pharaoh says, go. Go. It's time for the word of God to be fulfilled, Moses will go to Pharaoh ten times, and then he will say, go, go. The word of God is due to be fulfilled, so go. And then Moses will take the bones of Joseph. What did Joseph say? When the time comes, take my bones. He would take the bones of Joseph with him because Joseph had made the Israelites swear an oath. He said, God will surely come to your aid. And today God said, he will surely come to your aid. He will surely come to my aid. He will surely come to our aid. God will surely come to your aid. And then you must carry my bones. With you from this place, did the word of God fail? Absolutely not. God wants us to get to a place where we trust his word unconditionally. That's what God is doing with this whole series on faith. Where we trust the word of God without reservation. Without, without questioning. Where we are simple about trusting the word of God without negotiating the word of God, without discussing the word of God, without arguing the word of God. Joseph learned that God said, I was going to do this, and he just received it as is. And he lived by it. And, and he didn't see it come to pass, but he made plans for the day. Are you making plans for the day the word of God will be fulfilled? Are you making plans or are you just living? Then Joseph said to his brothers, as I bring this message to a close, I am about to die, but God will surely come to your aid and take you up out of this land to the land he promised on oath to Abraham Isaac and Jacob. When we get to a place where we trust the word of God, indeed, we will not shake when the winds and the storms of life come. We, you, you will be so resolute in your faith that people will wonder whether you know something they don't know yet you do because you've put your trust in the, world. The, the winds that come, and they do come, they come to test us and to reveal the degree to which we rely on God. Whether we believe God or whether we just go to church. Do you believe God? How do you react when the winds just blow? Are you running all over the place? Or do you remember what God promised? That he will bring you to the end. God wants to encourage us to be people of faith in deed, not in word. And before I close, I want to give our friends at home an opportunity to put their faith in God and his son, Jesus Christ. 
Maybe you've been following this ministry in Prince George's County or Montgomery County or, or online on YouTube or wherever you, you access this. I want to find out whether you have put your trust in God. We have. That's why we can stand tall and strong in the face of the changing scenes of life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, let me be the one to lead you to Christ so that your foundations will be strong. Will you say this after me, Heavenly Father? Today I put my trust in your Son, Jesus Christ, and I make him Lord over my life. If that's you, you got born again, congratulations and God bless you. Write to us, we'll be happy to mail you a Bible as I'll give to you to encourage you in this faith walk. And if you live in the Silver Spring, Maryland area, please join us for in-person worship. But remember that the faith of Joseph is resolute. It doesn't flip-flop. God bless you and join us again next Sunday for another Rima word. Amen. Church, receive this and lock it in your heart. Amen. bless you so much and thank you for your time. I pray that word has been a blessing. Go over it again. Those six points are something you must meditate upon. Study the word of God and know the promises of God. Don't settle for second best. God has spoken and it will come to pass. I want to thank our partners who support us with online giving. God bless you so much for your generosity. Through your generosity, we're able to continue bringing this word to you Sunday after Sunday. Now, if you've never been able to do that in support of this, we kindly consider a gift in support of the work we do. Finally, for those of you who live in the Silver Spring, Maryland area, will you join us for in-person worship? We would love to fellowship with you. Otherwise, join us next Sunday for another Rima word from Rima International Bible Church.